After the quantitative comparisons at the beginning of each quantitative reasoning section, there is a mix of multiple choice with one answer, multiple choice with one or more answers, and numeric entry problems. In this lesson, we'll explain what each question type is and also go through a single problem solving method that is very effective to use with all of them. Let's take a look at multiple choice with one answer. This question has a format that you've likely seen since elementary school. Five answer choices following the question stem or what is being asked. Only one of those answer choices is correct. Note that the oval answer formatting denotes the question type. The first step to solving a word problem like this one is to rewrite it mathematically. To see how this works, let's start by reading the question closely. It might sound like a no-brainer, but even if you know the math, if you don't take your time to fully understand what's being asked, you could answer incorrectly. So, in the interest of GRE success, let's read through this one carefully. Jeff is five years older than Laura and was twice her age three years ago. How old is Laura? The answer choices are 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We're told that Jeff is 5 years older than Laura. Let's take out some scratch paper and start breaking down this word problem into math. Let's say that Jeff's age is J and Laura's age is L. In that case, J equals L plus 5. Let's continue. Now we're told that Jeff was twice Laura's age three years ago. Jeff's age three years ago was J minus three. Similarly, Laura's age three years ago was L minus three. Since Jeff's age was twice Laura's age at the time, J minus three equals two times the quantity L minus three. Let's try and simplify this equation by multiplying each item in the parentheses by two. So J minus three equals two L minus six. At the end of the question stem, we are asked for Laura's age. So we need to solve for L. Step two is to solve strategically. We know that J equals L plus five. By plugging the first equation's value of J into the simplified second equation, we can get a brand new equation with just L. We can remove the parentheses on the left-hand side and combine the plus five with the minus three to simplify the new equation even further. We can then subtract L from both sides and add six to both sides, which gives us the value of L. In algebra, this is known as isolating the variable, so L equals eight. We have an answer, but is it the correct one? Let's go on to step three. Step three is to check our answer. Recall that we determined the value of L to be eight. If we substitute eight for L in our first equation, we get J equals eight plus five, which is 13. We now have values for both L and J. Let's plug both of them into our simplified second equation. J equals L plus five. We plug both of them in and see if we get a true statement. 13 equals 13 is a true statement, which means we solve the problem correctly. So the correct answer is eight, the fourth option. Great work. Using our step-by-step -step method, we were able to easily break down the problem and solve it. Now let's move on to the second question type multiple choice with one or more answers. Let's take a moment to read the problem. The ratio of boys to girls in a class is five to six. Which of the following could be the number of boys in the class? Indicate all possible answers. Note the squares next to the answers. These indicate the question type. The options are five, seven, 11, 15, and 18. Also, the end of the question tells us to indicate all possible answers. Here's something to notice throughout the entire test, including the verbal sections, the presence of squares next to answer choices means that more than one answer is possible. We will go through exactly the same steps as before. First, we're told that the ratio of boys to girls is five to six. Let's say that B and G stand for boys and girls respectively. If we rewrite the problem mathematically, this means that B must be a multiple of five and G must be a multiple of six. We are then asked which answer choices could represent the number of boys in the class or the value of B. Solving strategically, we can see that answer choices five and 15 are both multiples of five. Since we didn't have to compute anything, there isn't much to check here. So we just select the two answers and move on. Finally, we come to the last question type, numeric entry problems. 
These problems cover the same material as multiple choice questions, but there aren't any answer choices provided. We will also use the same techniques of rewriting, solving strategically, and checking our answers. For numeric entry problems, when we find the answer, we enter it into the text box in the middle of the page. Let's read through the problem. A bag contains two red and three blue marbles. If one marble is removed at random, what is the probability the marble is red? Rewriting the problem mathematically, we note that there are two red and three blue marbles. Let's use the formula for probability. Since our desired outcome is a red marble, and there are two red marbles, we put a 2 in the numerator. There are 5 total marbles in the bag, representing 5 total possible outcomes, so we put a 5 in the denominator. The answer is clearly 2 fifths, which we would enter into the text box if there were two separate entry boxes. But since we are only given one entry box, we must enter the decimal equivalent by dividing 2 by 5, which is 0.4. So in this lesson, we learned about the different types of quantitative reasoning problems and an effective method to solve them. Make rewriting the question mathematically, solving strategically, and checking the answers your go-to practice as you study for the GRE. Remember, if you have enough time during the section, it's a good idea to check your answers by plugging them back in. Good luck, and now get on with your practice.